All right, uh, good day once again. Uh, it's inshallah a day, Deji Mike, and I welcome you once again to Success Enlightenment. We've already started our probability distribution discourse on Success Enlightenment. We've, we've been able to discuss what is probability distribution, and we'll talk about the types of probability distribution. I mean, the discrete uh, probability distribution to be precise, all right? But in that video, uh, if you've not seen that, please go there and check it. So that this, yeah, these are built on that. This and other videos I'm making subsequently on probability, they are built on the fundamental knowledge that I'll be able to establish in the past two videos, right? Um, I mentioned earlier that there are forms of a discrete probability distribution, right? So one of the forms of discrete probability distribution is the binomial distribution, right? Uh, binomial distribution uh, is, is a very, very important distribution, right? It helps us to actually examine a discrete probability distribution where we have only two possible outcomes and uh, the, the trials are independent of one another, right? They are independent of one another, right? Uh, with less verbosity, let's get into detailed discussion of what? Of binomial uh, distribution. Let's get into binomial distribution right a binomial distribution is a form of a discrete probability distribution that describes the number of sources in a fixed number of independent what try right i we're trying to we're we having independent trials such as we, the, the probability the random experiment of throwing a coin right this is that independent try right is an independent try now you can toss it the first time, toss it the second time, independently. All right, we are each try has only two possibility, two possible outcomes. Can you have your head or a tail, success or failure? All right, depending on what you are looking for. You are looking for head. When the head shows up, that's success. When it doesn't show up, that's what failure. All right, it is named about uh, 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 Jacob uh, Bonoli and the uh, binomial distribution summarizes the number of tries when each try has the same chance of obtaining the specific word outcome all right since we have two possible outcomes so definitely equal chance is that a success or a failure the two chance is what is possible so the binomial distribution is uh it's a discrete distribution as we have said earlier so that is we use it uh when, when we're, we're talking about discrete word variable all right so there are actually two parameters in a binomial distribution which is the number of tries and the probability and the binomial distribution is built on the number of assumptions. The first assumption is that there are two possible outcomes, as we have said earlier, success and uh, failure. And the probability of success is, we shall denote probability of success by P. Uh, why the probability of failure is denoted by Q and is equivalent to what? Y minus what? Probability of uh, success. In such a way that the addition of probability of success and the probability of failure, we have to be equals to one all right uh there exists only one possible outcome for each try it could be success or it could be what failure all right when throw the, the coin this time around is that you having a head or you having a tail you cannot have both at the same time all right if you throw a die so that you have one you have two or three you cannot have all at the same time so there exists only one possible outcome for each try and each try has some probability of success um failure definitely the probability of having uh, one showing up when you toss a die is definitely one over six. That's probability of success. And probability of failure will be what? It will be five over six. And each tries of, uh, of, of concern, they are so that they are what? Independent of one another. That is, they are what? They are mutually exclusive. Right? And this, those are the what? Uh, essential assumptions of the word binomial distribution. Now, it comes to discussion of the properties. What are the key properties of these? Uh, distribution right the key properties of a binomial distribution are that one the binomial distribution is characterized by two parameters all right we already stated this earlier there are two parameters in the what in the binomial distribution we have the n which is the number of tries we have the p which is the probability all right uh other other properties of this distribution is that what the probability mass function that is the the general formula we use in calculating when we get what probability mass what function we're talking about the formula using the estimating word the binomial distribution is what n combination k that is we have the n number of tries and we want to see in in how many successive k tries we will get the desired word 
outcome. That's n combination k multiplied by the probability of k being successful times probability of k uh being being not being successful raised power n minus k. That is our what a probability mass function of a what of a binomial distribu distribution. All right. Uh, uh, other important uh, properties of this distribution is that when you are asked to find the expected mean, or sorry, expected value, expected value is empty as finding a mean of a what? Of a binomial distribution and is usually denoted by a mean, a sigma sign called mean. And the mean of a binomial distribution is the number of tries times the probability of what? Success. Also, if you are asked to find the, the variance, the variance of a binomial distribution is sigma square, all right? Which is equals to what? Number of tries times the probability of success times the probability of what? Failure. Also, the standard deviation we have to be the square root of the uh, variance. You have to be square root of the variance. All right? Uh, it's very, very important for us to identify these very essential qualities in our questions before we go ahead and apply the word, the binomial probability distributions word formula. All right? One thing we want to be certain of, we have two possible outcomes, which could be true or false, success or failure, yes or no. All right? If you are given any question whereby there are, all, there are definitely two possible outcomes, definitely that is a word, a binomial probability distribution uh, question. Although we have to be, we have also have to be certain that what the uh, the trials are independent. That is, the trials are independent of one another. All right? If the trials are not independent of one another, that is not a word. A, a binomial distribution the tries have to be mutually exclusive independent of what one another also the probability of success or failure we have to remain the same for every try for every try there the probability of success and failure we have to be exactly the same right the tries have to be what independent or mutually exclusive right although before we start checking this very quality the first thing we have to first be certain of is that what we are dealing with what a finite set of outcomes, which makes it a what a discrete uh, probability. All right, and uh, that's uh, that um, our uh, binomial probability distribution. Now we are going to get to the estimation of what our uh, binomial distribution. We are going to estimate binomial distribution with a set of what questions to illustrate. This is the typical formula we use in finding what the probability of a of a binomial probability distribution. All right, we we'll be we we'll be illustrating this in what in actuary world world. Problem where well, we are going to be finding the probability, if we are going to find the mean, the standard deviation, the failures, at as well as what the range of what of the distribution. All right. All right. The problem we we'll be we we'll be we'll be addressing here. Um, problem we are going to be solving here. Uh, let's check first. This this our problem. If it is a what, if we can apply a binomial probability distribution to it. All right. Um. It says, suppose a coin is toast six times, and we asked to find the probability of having exactly four eggs, having at least five eggs, having at most two eggs, and what is the mean and standard deviation of the distribution? Then what is the range of this uh, distribution? Okay, now let's look at the experiment once again. The experiment is what is the random experiment is the toasting of what of coin six times, right? The fact that we are tossing the coin six times, and we already know for for certainty that we the, when you toss the coin once, you can either have a head or a tail. So that shows that this is the discrete word probability problem. All right, we are now asked to find the probability of having exactly four eggs, five eggs, two eggs. Now, what if you look further into the details of this? Like when you toss the coin, right? There's a chance of if you are, if you are focusing on eggs, yeah. A success and there's because the probability of it, of it of it succeeding. It is only when we have a head, it is not when we don't have right. So this is definitely a what a, a, a what two outcome what distribution that is a success or a failure. When you have a head, it is a success. When you have a it's a what it's a failure. Now, is the probability of success equals in each word trials? Yes, it is equal in the in each trials. All right, probability of success is equal in each word try. So in this scenario, but probability of having the head will be what? It be what? It be one over. So it is equal in each word in each try. So therefore, this is a word. This is a binomial probability distribution word problem, and we can go further by solving this problem as we have ascertained is the word 
you can apply binomial distribution to it now let's solve it and see how it what how we are going to tackle this uh problem we are we are choosing uh, a coin all right six times that's the experiment all right uh we already know that if we are to toss a coin there are, we can either have a head or a tail all right uh so the probability of head that's what we are looking for there which means our p here okay our p will have to be one over two this is our probability of what of success from the word question now for our p is one over two then our q which is what probability of failure Our Q is what? Also 1 over 2. Don't forget our Q is what? It's 1 minus P. So this should be what? This should be what? 1 minus P. Which is equals to 1 over 2. All right. Now. What is the number of times that the coin said that the die uh, uh, the coin is what is toes? Now, from the the question we we have is is number of tossing a coin six times, all right? We have our n to be what? Our n to be six times, all right? So the first part of the question asks us to find the probability of having head shows up exactly how many exactly four times all right exactly four times this shows that our x here our x here is equals to four our x here is equal to four so from here now what we do from here now is what we apply our what our binomial probability we apply our binomial probability formula which probability of x here will then be equals to what n commutation x n commutation x Probability of probability of success raised to our x times probability of what failure raised to our what n minus s. All right. So now this is the formula we are this is the our binomial probability what formula this is what we are what we are applying now to use this formula so the first thing we are going to look for is what what is our n combination x what is our n combination x okay what is our n combination s n Sorry. N combination X. This we what? This is N factorial from an edge of what? Of combination. All over what? N minus X factorial X factorial. Right. In this scenario, our N is ready, is ready identified to be what? Our n is already identified to be what? To be 6. 6 factorial. Then our x is 4. We have our x is 4. So we have 6 minus 4 factorial 4 factorial. Okay? 
6 minus 4 factorial 4 factorial now from here from here we have 6 factorial can be done 6 times 5 times 4 factorial 6 minus 4 that will be 2 factorial all over 4 factorial the only 4 factorial we cancel 4 factorial 4, four factorial we cancel 4 factorial so n combination x will then be what 6 times 5 that is uh, 30 divided by don't forget this we cancel this divided by what 2 times 1 is what is 2 so it's, it's therefore equals to what 15 is therefore equals to 15 all right so we've already find our what our n uh, combination x to be 15 so therefore we can go further since we already find our n combination we can go further into our probability then our p of x now sorry let's try this more clearly p of x equals to 4 that's what we are looking for our p of s equals to 4 now equals to what p our p of s equals to 4 is equals to what p of sorry It goes to P probability of 4 and a probability of 4 a probability of 4 equals for any fine n combination S if I to be 15 that would be 15 probability of Success is what one over two. One over two. Probability of failure is what is one over two. A probability of zero raised power x. What's our x? Our s is four. Our s is four. Now, what's our n? Our n is six. And our x is what? 4. That's minus 4. So what we, have, what we have to deal with is 15. Into what? 1 over 16. 1 raised to the power 4 is 1. So 2 raised to the power 4 is what? 16. 1 over 16. into 1 over 2 6 minus 4 that will be 2 1 raised to the power 2 is what is 1 2 raised to the power 2 is what is 4 all right for the sake of those who don't understand how i get 1 over 4 let me show it here why i get the 1 over 4 is this this return to 1 over 2 everything raised by what 2 Okay, because 6 minus 4 is what? 6 minus 4 is 2. So 1 raised to power, 1 raised to power 2 is 1, and 2 raised to power 2 is what? Is, uh, is 4. So from here, we can press, uh, you can use our calculator directly to solve it. You can use our calculator directly to, to, to solve it. You can press all the digits at once to the, to the calculator. But yeah, I'll be I'll be pressing it one after the other. This will be 15. This is 15. What is 1 over 16 in the decimal form? That just press your calculator. 1 divided by 16. That is 0 0.0625. We have is 0. Point is 0. 
two five. Okay. What is one over four? One over four that will be zero point two five. That's zero point two. Five. Okay. So now, when you multiply fifteen, still with your calculator, fifteen times fifteen times zero point zero six two five times zero point two five. What does that give us? That give us zero point. 0 0.2 4 let's put it to what to four to three decimal places this implies that the the probability of add occurring exactly four times in our random experiment is, is 0 0.234 if you express it in percentage the probability of head uh, coming out exactly, exactly four times is what? Be what? 23.4%. 23.4%. That probability of having what? Head occurring what? Exactly four times. And this is the first task. This is the first thing we have to find in the question these are first this is the first thing we are, we are asked to find in the question let's solve the other part let's solve the other part the next we are we asked to find is the probability of having at least five head of x p of x greater than or equals to five okay what's the probability of having at least five and don't forget the experiment is the total of the coin six times um by that the maximum number of head we can have is what is six so probability of having at least uh five eight will then be probability of probability of Five eight showing no probability of five eight or probability of six eight that is this this will be equals to the probability of five plus probability of what of six when you have the word or in probability distribution the word or stand for what addition right so we already know our, our, our polynomial distribution formula. So we are going to find probability of what? Probability of 5. So probability of 5. That equals to what? 6 combination 5. Probability of sources raised to power x. Which is 5. Um, probability of a failure that's q raised by what it's n minus x which is 5 6 minus 5 okay this will then be equals to 6 factorial all over 6 minus 5 factorial 5 factorial 
times 1 over 2, which is probability of sources, 1 over 2 raised to the power 5. times 1 over 2 again 6 minus 5 that's 1 raised to power raised to power 1 all right our uh, 6 factorial that's be 6 times sorry okay that will be 6 times 5 factorial. All over 6 minus 1, that is 1 factorial. 5 factorial. Times 1 over, what is 2 raised power? 2 raised power 5, that will be, be 32. 1 over 32. times let's write it properly times one all over two okay times one all over two definitely from this five factorial we cancel five factorial out factorial we cancel five factorial out So what we have left we what will be six. We have this will be equals to six. Six divided by one is equal and six. All right, times what is one over thirty-two? Let's put it in decimal place. One divided by thirty-two. That's zero point. That's zero point zero zero point zero three one two five. And what is one over two? One over two is what? Is zero point five zero point five now when you press your calculator six times zero point three one two five times zero point five what does that give you times six times zero point three one two five times 0 0.5 that give us 0 0.09375 that's 0 0.09 sorry there's a mistake there i was writing 0 okay that would be zero point zero zero point zero nine zero point zero nine three eight. Let's Put zero point zero nine three eight. So therefore, the probability of it showing up at least five times is what zero point zero nine three eight. And if we put this in percentage, that would be what nine point four percent. So there's 9.4 percent chance that what there's 9.4 percent chance that 
head shows up at least five times okay all right uh the next tax we has to find is to find the probability of having uh at most two aid probability of having at most two aid okay all right um uh, that will be probability that will be p that will be p probability of x less than or equals to 2 all right at most 2 head all right you can you can have nothing okay you can have 0 head you can have 1 you can have 2 but you cannot have more than 2 so that would be probability of uh, of x less than or equals to 2 and that would be probability of That probability of zero p of x or uh, probability of zero or probability of what one or probability of what two okay all right so i already know our formula so we can just find what's probability of zero probability of one probability of two probability of zero is probability of having no no head at all Probability of one is probability of having one head, and probability of two is probability of having two head. So probability of uh, is zero. That will be that will cost to what? Six combination is zero. Probability of success is one over two. Raise power is zero. Probability of failure is one over two. Raise power what? Six, which is number of try. 6 minus what is 0. So that will be 6 factorial all over 6 minus is 0 factorial is 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1. Don't forget. 1 over 2 raised power 0. That is safety as 1. That will be 1. Anything multiplied by 1 is itself. So that 1 over 2 raised power what? 6. Okay. This will have all be what? 6 factorial all over 6 factorial because 0 uh, 0 minus 6 is 6. So 0 factorial is what? 1. So that's 6 factorial over 6 factorial. And what we are left is what? Multiply by what? 1. What is 2 raised to power 6? 1 raised to power 6 is 1. So what is 2 raised to power 6? 2 raised to power 6, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times two. Can you can do that directly from your calculator. That be 2 raised to power 6 will be what? 64. So times 1 over 64. Alright? So 6 factorial over 6 factorial will cancel your that's equal to 1. 1 over 64 in press the calculator 1 divided by 64. That will be what? Is 0. Point is zero, zero point zero one five six. So probability of having no head at all is what zero point zero one five six. The same thing as what one point seven percent. Same thing as one point seven. So here now we are going to find also the probability of having what one head. We are going to calculate also the probability of having one head. So what's the probability of having one head? So probability of having one head that is pro probability of one. That will be what six factorial all over six minus one. Factorial one factorial times one over two probability of success raised power one times what probability of failure, which is uh, one over 
two six six minus one. All right. So therefore, this will be equals to what six times five factorial all over what five factorial one factorial. One factorial is always empty as one. Five factorial counts to five factorial. This will be one over two. 1 over 3 to the power 1 is 1 over 2 times what? 1 over 6 minus 1 is 5. So we only 1 over 2 raised to the power 5. That's 2 raised to the power 5 is what? Is 32. So 1 over 32. Alright? So this will now be what? 6. This, is, this, is, this cancel this is 1. This is empty as what? 1. This will now be 6. Times 1 over 2 times 1 over 30. So we can do this directly from our, uh, our from our calculator. We can do this directly from our calculator. So that's uh, that will be 6 divided by 64. That is 0. Point, we have 0. Point, is 0. Nine three eight. So the probability of having a uh, one eight is what is zero point zero nine three. Same thing as what nine point four percent. Okay, same thing as nine point four percent. Also, we are going to find the what probability of having what two eight. What's probability of having two eight? So p of two. Will be what six factorial all over six minus two factorial two factorial one over two raised to the power two one over two raised to the power six minus two minus two okay so now what you have from here now you now be what six times five times four factorial all over 4 factorial 6 minus 2 is 4 times what 2 factorial this we cancel each other 1 over 2 raised to the power 2 that will be what 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 6 minus 2 that will be what what we have left is what is uh, 4 that will be what 1 over 16 1 over 16 so what we left what we are left with would then be what? We are left with what? 6 times 5, that is 30. 30 divided by 2, that is 15. We are left with 15 times 1 divided by 4. 1 over 4 times 1 over 16. All right, this then is equals to 15 divided by what is 4 times 16? Just press the calculator 4 times 16, 4 multiplied by 16, that's 64. So 15 divided by 64, which is then equals to 0. Point Two three four four two three four four four. Right now that we have found the probability of having is zero eight one eight and two eight, and we have to find the probability of what at most two eight. So the probability of at most two eight now we can. Gladly find probability of at most two, which is probability of s less than or equals to two to be sum of what is our probability of what having what is zero. Probability of having zero a that we calculated. What was it? Probability of having zero. Probability of having zero that we calculated is what is zero point zero one five six. 
is 0 0.0.0156. 0 .0 now, probability of having one head that you calculated, that one is what? Is 0 0.0938. 0 0.0938 and probability of having two eight that's is 0 0.2344 0 0.2344 so probability of x less than or equals to two of having at most two eight will be what will be addition of all these right it will now be what is zero probability of having is zero eight which is what is zero point is zero one five six plus right of having one head, which is what is zero point zero nine three eight plus probability of having two head, which is what is zero point which is zero point two three four four okay now if you press your calculator let's press our calculator and let's see what does this addition what does it give us what does that addition gives us so is 0 0.0156 plus 0 0.0938 plus 0 0.2344 that gives us 0 point, 0 point 3, 4, 3, 8. So in percentage, probability of having at most two edge will be what? Will be 34.4.4 percent. Be 34.4 percent. 12.4 percent right that's probability of having what at most two head all right i believe this is this is well understood so let's get back to the question and solve the later part of the of the question. all right the next thing we are asked to do from the question the next task there is to find the mean and the standard the uh, deviation all right the mean in a binomial distribution is usually denoted by the sine mu, the Greek sine mu. The mean is usually written like this Greek sine mu. All right, let me write it more clearly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mu. And uh, the mean usually what number of observations times what the probability of what sources. Yeah, number of observation, uh, our, our number of our experiment that is the possible number of trials is six. We told as the the coin six times, and our probability of success is what is one over two. So our mean is therefore what six over two, which is equals to three. So that is our mean that's our mean all right also we have to find our what standard uh, deviation our standard uh, deviation standard deviation our standard deviation here which is uh which i denoted by sigma in the binomial distribution sigma let me write the sigma sign clearly so that we can get it uh, uh this sigma this sigma all right the sigma, all right, uh, is usually the square root of the number of observations, the probability of success, and the word probability of failure. So, yeah, the number of observation is what is six. The probability of success is what one over two. The probability of failure is what one over two, all into what square root. Okay, so therefore, our sigma will be what square root of what. 3 over 2. Okay? What is the square root of 3 over 2? We can simply use our calculator to find the square root of what? 3 over 2. But for convenience sake, uh, three. what is 3 over 2 itself? What is 3 over 2 itself? 3 over 2 itself is what? It's 1.5. 
which means we are looking for square root of what 1.5 which is equals to what will be the square root of 1.5 all right the square root of the square root of 1.5 That will be what? 1. 1.2 approximately 1.225. This is what our standard uh, deviation. This is our standard uh, deviation. Suppose we are also asked in the question to find our what? Our variance. Our variance is usually the square of our standard uh, deviation. Our variance will be what? Sigma square. And in this case, our variance will be what? 3 all over 2 equals to what? 1.5. This will be our sigma. All right, the last part of the question asks us to find uh, the uh, range. All right, range is the maximum value of the distribution minus what? The minimum value of the what? Distribution. Now, the maximum value of the distribution, the mass of the distribution is usually fine with the formula your mean, your calculated mean plus two times your what? Your sigma. Two times sigma. And in this scenario, this will be what? Your mean is a, uh, what I mean is what? Is three and, your, and the, the sigma you calculated, this one you calculated, if you add that to it, that's two times uh that's two into one standard deviation one point two two one point two two what do we have there five one point two two five one point two two Five. So the maximum value will therefore be what? Three plus what is two times one point two two five? Two times one point two two five. Two times one point two two five. That will be two point four four five. So the maximum value of this division is there for 5.45. Okay? That's the maximum value of this uh, distribution. Also, in the same frame, we are going to find the minimum value to find the range. We are going to find the minimum value to find the range. So the minimum value of distribution is calculated with the formula. Minimum is what? The mean, the calculated mean, minus 2 times what? Our standard uh, deviation all right two times our standard uh, deviation all right our calculated me is uh is three so this will be what three minus what two into what 1.225 so this will be what three minus 2.45 so therefore the minimum value will be what is zero point five five so from here now we can find our range okay from here we can find our range okay our range which is the what the maximum which is 5.45 minus the minimum 0 0.55 so the range will now be what 4.45 Let's press our calculator. What is what? 5.45. 5.45 minus 0 0.55. That's 4.9. So the range will be what? 4.9. So that's the range of this word distribution. And with this, we've come to the end of this uh, question, right? With this, we come to the end of this uh